This is a WIS News update. Coming down to breathe new life into the Congaree River area. City officials announced today they've narrowed the field of companies to redevelop the CCI prison. Keith Landry has the latest on the effort to convert an eyesore into an asset. Planners hope Columbia's CCI prison will be replaced by homes and shops along the Congaree River within two years. Today, city officials narrowed the field of potential companies from 13 to 7 in a redevelopment project here. All of these groups have outstanding backgrounds and reputation in urban redevelopment. Planners envision 25 acres of development near the Congaree River. The River Alliance is working with the city. If we can do what we want to do, which is around 2,000 housing units in the first five years, up and down both sides of the river, then we will have made a major movement towards that end. Analysts think the CCI land will be worth $60 million when it's developed, and it will generate almost $1 million a year in property taxes. But it takes tax dollars to generate them. We'll have to put some upfront money in. Uh, how much, we don't know, but I suspect you're talking uh, one or two million dollars of infrastructure. CCI buildings will be demolished in August, and the city will select a developer in early November. Keith Landry, WIS News. The city does not plan any public hearings to select a developer for CCI, but city leaders say they are open to suggestions from constituents. Controversy at the South Carolina Commission for the Blind. Leaders are pushing for Governor David Beasley to remove board member Erlene Gardner by the end of the month. Seen here in 1993, Gardner, who is legally blind, spoke to lawmakers on behalf of the agency. Last month, the State Ethics Commission warned Gardner for wrongly claiming lunches on state vouchers. That's prompting board members like Robert Harrelson to call for Gardner's dismissal. Do you you heard the ethics whistleblower? No, I do not. Uh, I do. You, Ms. Gardner, that she made a made an error uh, with uh, in, as far as ethics is concerned, and um, she, like myself or anyone else, uh, should be dealt with uh, in in accordance to the law. Gardner maintains she's being ousted because she has highlighted problems in the agency. There's no word on when Governor Beasley will decide what, if any, action to take. Taxpayer groups are fighting Richland County Council. During a meeting in council chambers today, members of We the People planned a protest for next month. The groups don't like an increase in expense money council members have given themselves. The $1,000 a month would go to expenses like travel and postage, but some council members say they need to look again at the way the increase was adopted. And speaking of increasing, collectors are hoping that's what's going to happen with certain Olympic souvenirs. They fill Centennial Park every day, almost as many traders as pins, and it is serious stuff. How long have you been doing this? I bought my first Olympic pin in 1960 when I was about 13 years old. It's a serious hobby for some, just fun for others. Some pins go for just a few dollars, but the Olympic flame and Georgia peach, only 100 were made, cost $2,500 each. We'll be right back with a look at our weather forecast after this. I'm here to ask Mr. McDonald how he likes his new Chevy truck. Hey, I guess you know your S-Series comes with all the features you'd want on a truck. Mm. Yep. And that it has more horsepower than Ford Ranger. Yep. And that Chevy makes the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Yep, that's why I bought one. I got a lot of kids. And you know how hard kids are on vehicles. Yep. The Chevy S-Series, now only $189 a month. Cute kids. Split it with you? If you want a sandwich with thick slices of delicious grilled Texas toast, you have two choices. A new Texas Toast Bacon Cheeseburger and a Texas Toast Breakfast Sandwich. And if you want to find them, you have only one choice. Hardee's. Are you going to eat the pickle? Some of the world's favorite things are made right here in South Carolina. This is the laboratory of Perception Kayaks. Welcome to Park But that only seems natural in a state with this kind of beauty and people with a spirit to match. Good things are bound to be created. Maybe that's why we know there's no problem too big to solve if we work together. Just take a look around at good things we make all across this state in the spirit of Carolina. 
pretty warm day in the Midlands, especially when you take into account the heat index. Let's go to Joe Pinner at the Weather Board for the latest on the outlook. Joe? That's right. Our heat index get up, did get up to about 107. That's pretty high. So you slow down and make sure the animals get a lot of water, too, along with you. Here's why our weather is so similar to that in Atlanta. We have a frontal system to the north. We have an unstable air mass to the south. A lot of moisture, and we have a little triggering device, a little trough that's been triggering some thunderstorms, and the PD, in fact, they had some trees down in thunderstorms uh, earlier this evening, and thunderstorms continue down into Florida. No movement expected with this front, so our weather for the next several days is going to be about the same. Dry behind this particular front, but a lot of thunderstorms in the Midwest and humid over the southeast. Forecast for tonight, partly cloudy, low of 76, and then for tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated thunderstorms, high of 96 degrees. Susan? Thanks, Joe. And that's it for this Olympic news update. Be sure to join us for all the latest news, weather, and sports tonight on Nightcast following NBC's coverage of the Olympic Games. Good night. <laughs>